Today marks International Women's Day and it's being celebrated under the theme Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. Now, according to the United Nations, women make up only 22% of artificial intelligence workers globally. But the UN says digital technology is opening new doors for the global empowerment of women, girls and other marginalized groups. Well, let's find out how, how computer scientist and group executive for innovation at Telcom, Dr. Maki Jainchis, uh, is making this all happen and uh, she joins us. Uh, now via Zoom. Good to have you with us uh, from Pretoria, Doctor. And uh, it's a strange that in 2023 uh, that we still have to have these conversations. We're lagging quite a bit behind, aren't we? We're doing something about it, but we should have been much further down the road. Would you agree? Gareth, thank you so much for having me and good afternoon to you, the viewers at home. I think indeed um, it is amazing that uh, in 2023 we are still having these sort of discussions. But the reality is that we end up looking at the end product. So workplace environments are faced with challenges of not having diversity. And in this case, with the statistics, a representative of women, particularly in the artificial intelligence field um, within the sector. But the reality is that the interventions need to come much more earlier than that. There has been great conversations on the impact of not having diversity and women in artificial intelligence and the products that are harmful that come out, sometimes due to a lack of diverse developers and implementers who are sitting around the table. Mm -hmm. If we look at basic and, and, and pre-primary, the work that goes in there when it comes to things such as mathematics and science are very important in articulating the throughput that we have then of women who come out on the other end who work in this sort of sector. And I suppose you've just made a good point as well that, uh, and I always love uh, the, the imagery and the analogy of those sitting around the table that are making these decisions. But let's be very honest, again, I know we're uh, into 2023, but those decisions often are being made by men sitting in high-powered positions and can't quite understand diverse groups' views. And that then leads their decision-making going forward. Gareth, that is so true. I think it is um, quite important that we have diversity in leadership positions where strategic decisions are taken in terms of investments. But if we look at products and innovation, you do need diversity. It's a strength to have diversity around it because you have the lived experiences of people around the table. If we look at the area of artificial intelligence and the technology of language translation, where you speak into a technology and it is able to understand my accent, even though I don't have a very strong British or American accent. The challenge is who is sitting around the table to be able to advocate for certain languages and to be able to work on technology that has a representation across board. So it's very important that when we consider um, diversity, we think about it as a strength in not only bringing um, cutting edge products, but in being able to address the societal challenges or the societal uh, um, issues that we face as a country. So the inclusion of women in top leadership positions, the inclusion of women in key decision-making positions is important. But this is not just about women, it's about ensuring that we have um, a diverse representation, bringing out an innovation and technology that takes the country forward, that addresses everybody's need, whether you're sitting in Santin, whether you're sitting in a village, somewhere in Malamulele. I think it's very, very important that we think about people in all strands of life. And when we talk about those who are not necessarily in built-up areas, like I'm in Johannesburg, I'm in Hyde Park specifically as well, you're talking to me on Zoom, but for many, many young women, young girls around the country, this is actually a luxury uh, as well. So where do we start trying to fix the infrastructure problems? We can possibly deal with those sitting around that table we spoke about, get those more diverse views in leadership, but that can also only be implemented from a technological perspective if the infrastructure exists. And there again, not to be the bearer of bad news, I get the sense infrastructure-wise, we're not up there uh, with the rest of the world. Indeed, I think as private sector, we have a key role to play. And this is why uh, as Telcom, we're quite passionate about enabling access, inclusive digital access. But in over and above infrastructure, we do need a future fit workforce, um, future fit workforce that is going to be able to say once there is connectivity, 
what are the products that we then give to people? So once we do have connectivity, how do we enable people in different places to be able to access education? How do we enable people to be able to bank from wherever they will be? How do we enable people to be able to have access to the digital world? So over and above infrastructure play, we do also need to think about how are we investing um, in the workforce that will be coming into the sector to actually change it? So definitely in alignment, I think as private sector, we do have a key role, which we are playing um, in ensuring that there's inclusive access to these. One of the things that we do as, as Telcom is partner with higher learning institutions through what we call centers of excellence, where we fund students from different backgrounds to work on cutting edge topics on research in the telecommunications and the technology sector where they solve problems to enable us to not just bring a high quality network, but look at products over and above that, that speak to the everyday South African. And how do we make such infrastructure cheaper, affordable and accessible to people? And not just accessible as well, because I'm glad you moved me along very nicely. We spoke about uh, the younger generation and those not living in built-up areas. You just brought in higher education, obviously very, very key. The question, I suppose, from there, Dr. Jainches, as a last question to you, is job market as well. You get the qualifications, you get higher education background and expertise. Uh, is there a market uh, for uh, digital inclusion for women and girls in South Africa? Is there a job market big enough to support that? I think there is many opportunities within the digital economy. I think the great opportunity about the digital economy is that work is not restricted to geographic location. Um, women now have the opportunity leveraging technology to be able to work remotely in different countries. Um, women can start their own businesses online, leveraging um, connectivity and digital platforms and online marketplaces that open up borders for them sitting in their own homes. But they need to be empowered to be able to do so. So I think there are a lot of, of opportunities that, that um, women can leverage, uh, but there needs to be spaces that allow them and enable them to be able to access the digital world. And that's why you tend to have an imbalance in in many sectors where you see a representation, a high representation of women, of, of where you see, uh, excuse me, a high representation of men within different sectors. So I think initiatives that are targeted at empowering women are quite important. Uh, perhaps I'll leave this as a last question. I really want to get this in, but forgive me, I'm going to ask you to be as brief as possible, doctor. Uh, I do ask for the forgiveness. Uh, even as a woman working in the sector and in the industry that you're in now, let's be honest as well, there's still an exclusion even within uh, your field of expertise, I'm sure. It's still a male-dominated world. It shouldn't be, but here we are. Do you find that you're still having to fight for every inch that you get? Gareth, I think um, ground breakers, barrier breakers will always face challenges. That being said, they are allies, male allies, who play such a key role to the advancement and growth of women in different sectors. I think we need to, not just from a policy perspective, but um, from an intent perspective, we need to be intent as leaders um, to enable women to be able to flourish within corporate sectors, for example. So it shouldn't just be about targets, but we should be intent about not just training, but providing spaces and opportunity for women. But the last thing that I want to say, I think as, 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 as I said at the beginning, the investment in young women should really start at pre-primary, at high schools, and then articulate into universities. I think that will allow us to have a very strong pipeline that goes into the workplace environments. And then we should be quite strict about the monitoring and evaluation of the inclusion of that diverse workforce across our corporate companies. I appreciate you coming on to share your views and also what I think I'm taking away from this is hope as well. Uh, this International Women's Day, there is opportunities as there should have always been, but it looks like it's being accelerated forward by people just like yourself. Dr. Maki Jainjis speaking to us about technology and digital inclusion, especially for women and girls here in South Africa. Start from a young age all around South Africa, not just built up areas, through school, through higher education and into the workplace.